Hi, I'm Jennifer Ackerman Haywood from CraftSanity.com and on this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to set up your own race finish line, make a really cool running cape, and also put some friendship beads onto your shoes so when you're running and uh, you can have something to, uh, when you get tired, you look down and you get some superpower from uh, seeing how many friends you have and support you have in your running community. And this, as you can imagine, uh, this is really kid focused. Uh, I've never run with a cape. I will do that tomorrow for the first time when I run with my daughters and the girls on the run race. Uh, and it's really not a race. It's a 5K. It's a fun run. And um, Girls in the Run is a really cool program that's nationwide. I've been a coach for three years, and both my daughters are running for the first time together this year. And what the whole program is about um, building girls' self-esteem. But the th things I'm going to show you today about having, you know, setting up a finish line uh, in your, you could, this could be for a neighborhood fun run. This could be with your scouting group. This is not a focused program on just girls on the run. This can be adapted for boys and uh, really for adults even. So uh, we're going to kind of get started here with uh, showing you some quick things you can do uh, the night before the race, really, if you have the fabric, uh, you can uh, get going on this. I, I'm a deadline crafter, so um, <laughs> this is right up my alley. So we're going to get started first by showing you just the easy friendship pins that you can do here. Now, I am a child of, I was born in the 70s, grew up in the 80s, and uh, I did a lot of these little friendship pins. And what I found in the jewelry aisle at your local craft store, these pins are, um, as you can see here, these do not have the little curly cue at the end here. I'm going to find, I'm going to pull an example of a pin that has, and I think I have one here in my pocket. Um, this is your traditional safety pin with the, the little curl at the bottom. For this project, to put these on shoes, I like to find a pin in the jewelry section that does not have any barrier right here. And let me show you why. So if you're going to, with a pin like this one, if you put any bead on there, it's going to get stuck. And then when you open it and you go to stick it on something, your beads are going to be in the way and they're going to fall off. So with these, these beads here, or with these pins, uh, you can just take the, the beads and you can put them all the way around, just down like this. Okay. And they go all the way around. I'm going to try to quickly fill up and I'm not doing any fancy pattern. The kids like to do really fancy patterns. And actually what we did for Girls on the Run this year, we used these for every lap the girls ran in practice, they got a bead, which was really fun. So it's an added incentive for girls to get, you know, do that extra lap. And the cool part is now, you know, in the race, the girls will be able to look down and kind of see their accomplishments. I mean, it's kind of like uh, they'll have some bling on their shoes. And that's really fun. Okay, so we get to this part, and we got a, my pin is filled. And then I, you guys are probably like, "Well, how do you keep them on that side?" Well, I had to figure that out because uh, it doesn't. It's there's, there's no point if you just close it and then they go back on the other side. That's kind of a problem. So what I did is I went and got some of this. This is just the fun foam from the craft department as well. And as you can see, those beads want to just go right back. So what I do is I cut these little, I make kind of like a little bead of foam. Just cut a little square off here. You don't want to cut them too small because if you cut it too small, you'll poke right through it and tear it. So which I have done. Oh, look, <laughs> these want to come right back off. So that's why we need that foam there to keep them in place. So I'll set it over here so we can kind of see. Okay, so you're gonna put the foam on and just put it right through the center. And the kids might need some help with this. This might be the part where the, the moms and dads help. Okay, and just put, put that foam on, work it all the way down to the corner here. And then, so that's not going anywhere. Those beads are not moving. And that's kind of cool. You could also put a little drop of like a super glue if you wanted to. Uh, don't let the girls or boys do that. Do that a parent should do that just because that stuff is very toxic uh, and then when you put them on the shoe I like to put them so they're work them so they're under a few of the laces going across there because that will keep the that will keep the pin 
from flopping around when they're running because you want it to be decorative but not distracting. So this is something that it'll, it'll stay on there. And obviously within reason, if you have some runners who earn tons of uh, beads and they have a bunch of pins, you want to obviously within reason probably keep them to no more than like four on each shoe because then it just gets it gets heavy and it adds weight. So this is something that we we found this year worked really well for us. So just a little idea out there. And these, you don't have to be on a running team to do this. This is something that, you know, any, any kids might want to do just to uh, trade with their friends on the playground. All right, so now we're going to move on to the capes. And these are pretty fun. The, probably the most complicated part about it is the fact that I was trying to figure out like, okay, what size works best. And so what I found is that this, I, you, I wanted to be able to use freezer paper to make my pattern because that's what I use for everything. So I really wanted to find something that was a size that would be kind of draping at the waistline for the girls. And so to do that, I, worked with this is freezer paper that is 18 inches wide um, so it's an 18 inch wide piece of freezer paper so it comes on a roll just like this and this you actually find in your grocery departments so your local grocery store will have this and that's the best place to buy it because it's cheaper than if you buy it uh, if you buy something like this at a craft store it's going to be a lot more expensive so look for it right in your grocery aisle and it's always fun when you can get craft supplies at the grocery store when you're running errands Okay, so what I did here is I decided that I wanted the cape to be 12 inches across the back. And so I just cut a piece of freezer paper, just tore it off the roll, and then I folded it in half just to make it easier for me to do the pattern. And this is the pattern, this is my pattern that I did here, and I can show you this way. So it's 6 inches across the top here, and it's 11 inches down here. Okay, and I'm going to switch this back for the overhead shot. Okay, and it's 18 inches wide. So what you're going to do is when you're making this pattern at home, because it's a little, it's too big to print out on a printer. Uh, what I did first is I just marked six, six inches from the top, and then I measured across here. Probably I am, I can tell you how many inches up from the bottom. Okay, so I'm about, about four inches up from the, bo the bottom of your um your, your uh, cape pattern here, from the bottom edge, you're gonna make a dot and go across 11 inches. So it's six inches at the top, 11 inches at its widest point. You're four inches up from the bottom edge. Okay, and then you're gonna just, with a straight edge, I just took a straight edge, went out to this point, and then I just made a curve here. A slight curve, it doesn't have to be perfect. There's no reason for this to be you know, super perfect. Um, the key is the fabric type that you go with. And I decided that I looked and I thought I saw some like cheaper fabrics. I looked at cotton. I thought about going with t-shirt fabric because you can actually cut the back off of a t-shirt um, and leave the, this part here, the, the neck band. But the thing is, if kids are running around, actually running in a fun run, you don't want to have anything around their neck. So that's why I decided to go with something that does not tie. This pins right onto the shirt. So what I did is... Um, I went and found this fabric here is called, it's a performance fabric is what it's called. It's 90% um, polyester and 10% spandex. And this is really used for like a leotard or like some dance attire. And um, what I decided to, to do, I went, decided to go with this because it's, it's sparkly, it's gonna catch, it's gonna be eye catching. And I made 35 of these for all the girls on three teams that we have at the elementary school. And I really didn't want to go with something that was super um, flimsy or didn't look that great. Because if you have a cape in your superhero, you want to have a nice looking cape. And um, I mean, I'm not a superhero. Uh, sometimes I wish I was. And uh, I would say all the time <laughs> I wish I was. And I would wait. I want to have a sparkly cape. So this was $16.99 a yard. And you people are like, whoa, that's super expensive. Well, I got it 40% off. And then I hit another 15% off on that discount as well so I had the discounts added up and per cape this is not very expensive at all so I made 35 of these and um, per cape it's not that bad and you might be able to team up with some other parents and get some people to chip in so all right so to make these capes 
it's kind of like you want to make the fabric go as far as possible. So what I did here, once you cut out your pattern, this is the really cool part about freezer paper. And I use freezer paper for all the, any time I make anything, uh, anything out of fabric that I'm cutting a pattern. I always make a duplicate. I trace my pattern from the store or if it's one I'm drawing myself, I always put it on freezer paper. And then what you do, and even though this is not the kind of fabric that I would want to iron at length for obvious reasons, because this is not just really made for that, um, I have an iron warm enough over here. I believe it's going to be warm enough. Yeah. Don't touch your irons at home. It's not a good idea. Um, <laughs> and also, you're noticing I'm not ironing on, a, on an iron surface. Like, I, But this is what I do. I have this old cutting mat that's been used and abused. And all I'm doing here is I'm trying to get this to stick. Now, on one side, now keep in mind, I've used this to make 35 capes. So that waxy side that sticks really well when you first start does not stick as well now. But I've used this over and over, and all I'm doing is just getting this to, to stick. And it doesn't have to be completely stuck to it. But you can get this to stick on here. And then the first cape I made, I cut out just to see you know, how complicated that was going to be. And I was like, yeah, I'm not cutting anymore. So once again, the rotary cutter. This is a fantastic tool, folks. I wouldn't craft as much as I do if this thing had not come into my life when it did. So, okay, so what you're going to do is you're just going to follow your pattern. Totally self-explanatory. The one thing I noticed when I made these and I stayed up till, oh, let's just say it was an ungodly hour. I made these all in one big pile. And as I got tired, especially around the corners, I was starting to cut <laughs> pieces away from my pattern. So that's one thing you got to be aware of is that you want to be mindful. Oh, there you go. See, I just demonstrated how that happens. See, and it's okay. No big deal. I mean, obviously if you cut a big part of it off, I'm kind of, what I would normally do is I would turn this. I'm not doing that. I'm trying to make excuses here, folks, for why this isn't perfect. But here's the thing. The kids are not going to be able to tell that you cut a little tiny piece off. They're not going to care, care at all. And if you move it, the good thing is, because this is stuck down, it's not a big deal. And I'm noticing, too, that it's, going to, it's getting close to that time for me to replace my rotary blade because I've been doing a lot of cutting lately. And this is pretty, I mean, it's a pretty easy thing. When you have to do a lot of these, you will want to team up with somebody else to help if, they're avail if help is available. And so very quickly, voila, we have one more cape. And we're all set. We're ready to pin this on the back of an unsuspecting child that we're going to turn into a superhero. Okay, so to put the cape on, it's pretty, you know, pretty easy to do. But what I did here to kind of gather it a little more at the top is I just folded it over just, you know, like a half inch little dart here and pinned it down. And I don't try to hide the pins. I just like that handcrafted DIY look. So you just want to pin these on and not poke your runner. But go ahead and let those pins show. And I think three pins should, should do the trick. If you want to put more in, you can. But I think three, three is sufficient and you're good to go. Uh, how does it feel to have the cape on? Do you feel like you're gonna run faster? No. No? <laughs> it's a piece of fabric. Oh, wow, okay. That, I was hoping for a little more magical response, but okay. So you're realistic about this? Yeah. What is the benefit to having a cape on? You look awesome. You look awesome, okay. And you don't think that makes you go any faster? No. All right, I think I'm gonna go faster with the cape on, but. That's just me. Sanity, craft sanity, art and craft creativity. Interviews with people who make they are here. All right, so we gave you some ideas that we've tried, and now I'd like to hear your ideas. So if you have done a Girls on the Run project or maybe a project with um, the Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts, it doesn't have to be running related. I'd like to hear about it. So you can leave a comment below or uh, send me a message, jennifer at craftsanity.com. And I'd love to feature some of your ideas because I know as a busy mom, sometimes I barely sleep. So the creativity is sometimes hard to jumpstart. 
I could use your help. So tell me what's worked for you and I'll put the word out and we can share ideas. Thanks a lot for watching and uh, we'll see you back here soon.